Hey, we're here back with a YouTube video. <laughs> my little niece is here. My other niece is filming this whole shindig. And you have a bunch of questions, right? Uh -huh. So we're going to do some questions. Actually, it's going to be some good questions that a lot of people ask. And I'm going to answer them. But she's going to help me. Sophia's going to help me out. So you, so you guys are starting. So my two nieces are starting a YouTube channel. Is it about horses? Yeah. A lot oh. of horses? Just horses? Two horses. Two horses. They have two horses. And they're getting into video editing and stuff like that. So I told her, you got to learn about audio levels, right? Mm -hmm. So she's going to ask me some tough questions. So here we go. The first one, what is an audio level? Hold on, you got to speak up. I can't hear you. What is an audio level? An audio level. Well, in the digital world, an audio level is the level at which your audio comes through the playback system. So in the digital world, um, peak zero full scale. So we actually use LUFS, which is loudness units full scale, to, to actually see where we're at for different digital services. All right. The second one is um, how can... Um, what it happens if my audio is too loud? Audio if the, if too it's loud. too loud, like when yeah. you record it? Yeah. Well, number one, if you're too loud, it's worse than too low because if you're too loud, it'll distort. Have you ever watched the video on YouTube where you hear somebody distort it? Like it's real grainy sounding? Like, <laughs> like that? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Or if you go to like put it on like YouTube or Spotify or any of the, the services you guys use, it'll actually do a thing called limiting and it'll turn it down and it'll make your audio sound different than when you sent it to them. Keep going. Um, what you got? What else? What are the audio levels um, through YouTube? Oh, like the actual LUFS level that we were just talking about? Um. It is negative 16 LUFS, and that is, you can check that on a meter, and there's a bunch of plugins, and they might even have an app on your phone you could use to, to check it, like if you were making them on your phone. Um, how do you control the audio level on when you're doing a YouTube video? How to control it? Well, the first thing is, is in... When you're editing your video, you should have volume control up and down. And the problem with some like free apps, they don't give you something where you can see. But most of the time, if you know how like you have it too hot, does does your, the uh, video software you use, can you see the level? You can't? Mm -mm. Okay, so like what I do, I can see the level and then there's, there's actual a thing called like a WLM meter I use by a company called Waves. And you can actually have the software tell you what level is too much or too little. And if you're using a microphone, if it's pegging the red on your iPhone, it's way too loud. Is ours pegging the red? All right, we're good. Uh, another one is how do you get it to, um, how do you stop? Oh, <laughs> sorry. How, I... do you, how do you get it to um, like certain level? Certain levels? Oh, oh, like, there's a thing in the audio world, which, if you're watching this channel, you can use limiters. A limiter, like, compresses the dynamic range. So if you watch a big movie in, like, a movie theater, they're using a lot of compression because sound effects and things like that, they need to be compressed dynamically. That's why I keep doing this. So when you push it less dynamic range, you can actually turn it up louder. And that's what you do. So so to get certain levels, you want to use a thing called a compressor or a limiter to do that. Um, so how do you, like, uh, when you're recording a video, how do you uh, make sure, like, the you know how the wind, like, sometimes, like, blocks out your video? Oh, the okay. wind gets in the mic. Yeah. Okay, so this is a good one. So on an iPhone or something, the problem is, I don't know if they make these things, but they're actually called, some people call them like cattails and stuff. They're like the, they look like the, 
hairy thing that goes around the mic. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And what that does is it blocks the, the diaphragm of the mic from getting pushed with the wind. It's like if you used your voice and you like say P or it's actually pushing wind out of your mouth and it changes how the diaphragm gets hit and it causes like a plop kind of sound. It's a plop sound, right? Plop. <laughs> so so you, you know what I mean though? You get those pops, but to get the wind away, you gotta put a wind filter, they call it, or a noise filter, so it's it goes around the microphone. So when you're doing your horse videos, you should do that. You should get a, an external microphone with that thing and you put it on there and then you could know that you're not going to hear the wind right yeah. you got anything else um uh, where are the audio levels for um spotify spotify is actually negative 14 lufs it's a little bit different than youtube um what are the audio levels uh for apple Play? i think apple's the same as youtube it's negative 16 and i think they use a format called a flac file F L A C file. And then that's the other ones we use Wave and A I F F. You guys got all this? Yeah. You learning something? Yeah. Is it good? Are we yeah. are we doing good? Yeah. Alright. So what do you want to learn about your your channel? Do you have any other questions about your channel? Um like audio wise? Are you good? All right, we're good. So this was Sophia, my niece, and my other niece behind the camera, Addison, which nobody sees. But we were just doing a few few questions that come up. And hopefully you get some, uh, some edumacation out of that. What's happening, YouTube? Shout out to my nieces, Sophia and Addison. This is the third video. She keeps calling me. They're getting into their, their video. Um, super shout out to them because they're getting into video and I want to support them. My little nephew, we're going to do a, a video on soundproofing and stuff like that. So the joy of making videos and, and sometimes, you know, doing this for a living, sometimes you can get burnt out and you go, oh man, I don't want to do this. And, and But it's it, it's worth it. I mean, we got a lot of stuff to cover. Today's video, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to speed these videos up to get right into the content. This is about levels. Okay, that's it. And and I want people to understand how important it is to bring your recording level in at a reasonable level. And I'm going to talk to you about what works for me. So I'm going to move this <coughs> cool tripod. You guys check that out. So look at this. Okay, so you're seeing over here in the top of the rack, those two quarter inch cables are going to two 1073s. Now those 1073s allow me to get the get the vibe I want. I can push that preamp as hard as I want. And then I can go down here. This is the signal path. It's pretty simple. And then you have this mix level. Okay, if you've never seen this, this is a really cool option. The mix level lets me trim. Okay, it's a trim knob, but it's a it's an analog one. Similar to what you have in Pro Tools. It's in your Pro Tools other category, I think, but it's called trim. And it allows me to trim it back so I can hit the preamp pretty hot. I can hit the summing pretty hot, and then I can trim it back. So here's what we want to do, though. What are we talking about when we talk about levels? Okay, I think we're starting to enter into another loudness war. And it's real. I mean, we all want it loud. But the thing is, is we want it loud, but there's a right way to get loud. I think that's the best way I can say that. So today, I have an MPC hooked up to those two 1073s. When I track, okay, or when I get a mix, I'm going to trim the track down to this level. I'll show you the level. When I push play on this, it's just a basic hip-hop sample and drum beat. But when I push play, it should be coming in. My, my taste is negative 30 to negative 28, and that's even pushing it. As you stack tracks, the master fader is going to obviously go up because you have more information. So that's why they're saying, you know, in Pro Tools, if you look at this meter, that's why they're saying, hey, mix around here. You know, and people don't understand how important that is when you get to your final mix in the dynamics and you're fighting for space and the, and the image is getting worse and you're going, man, what can I do? It sounds horrible. But I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Okay, I'm going to show you how you can use plugins and not have to change the game and where to start. 
and then and then we'll end this video so so here's push and play this should be around negative 28 look at the meter here not bad right okay so real quick um, I did this video last night and then something happened to the feed so I've done this a few times I'm still figuring it out so this is a, a actually a preset it was already set I can't take credit for this but really cool this is called bass drum boom now when I come in at that level watch how efficient this plugin does its job so now listen off totally changes the kick drum definitely bass drum boom okay what the heck was that see man I'm getting all kinds of crazy things I think somebody's sabotaging our videos <laughs> okay so real quick when you come in around negative 30, negative 28, you open up your plugins and you put them on that track, your presets should be in the ballpark. Now, I'm not going to go through it, but if I have it way too loud, those presets aren't going to sound good. You're going to have to totally change them. And, and they, they designed it that way because most people are, are going into school and stuff like that. They are taught to stay around that level negative 18 RMSs and and staying in that ballpark negative 20 so so you're sitting here and you're going okay that's the best solution right now watch how I can change the sound of this with another plugin from Sheps so we're gonna grab another plugin from Sheps and we're gonna put the Omni Sheps Omni on so check it out and a saturator. So let's turn them all off. Crazy, right? So we're probably around negative 25, I would say. Yeah, it's master a lot of records, dude. It's weird. Okay, so so the thing is, is now we're around negative 20, 25 after our processing. We're still in a good place. We and, and what I wanted you to take notice of in this video is I didn't have to slam the snot out of it and turn the volume up way loud to get more energy out of that sample. And that's, that's what we're talking about. So let me show, after you record, you're around negative 28 to negative 30. You do your processing, you're around negative 25. You, you're, you have so much headroom. That's what I think we mean by headroom. And I, and I think when I see a comment on Facebook about, I can't believe this guy sent this to me or something. And the reason that I get a, a little frustrated is because there's no education. Nobody says, hey, where do you record? Because nobody knows. You know? And then they go, oh, this is a safe way to record. This is a super safe way to record because now you're going to be able to use your plugins for what they were intended for. You have total, a huge amount of headroom. And you can let a mastering engineer turn the thing up for you. And if you want to turn it up yourself, now watch what happens. I'm going to use just a basic stock. I'm going to see this. I haven't done this in the video. Hopefully it doesn't just totally screw it up. But um, I'm going to use Isotope, Ozone 9. Okay, so this is a homemade mastering bundle here. All right, here we go. So I'm going to listen to our track. I don't even know if it can even do it while it's in i mode or input mode but we're gonna see see if i can screw up my video so i'm gonna i'm gonna use master assistant in ozone to master this track here we go let's make it streaming let's go modern
curious to see how loud it makes it. Watch your ears. Let's see, it's probably negative 14. Look at how much it limited it. That's awesome. Negative four, it's negative 13. All right, let's turn off the ozonator. Okay, so so that's really where we're at. So in, in context, if you have that one sample and then you have another sample and you have like a whole mix, that was basic mixing levels. Now, if this is just all where this is it, then, then yeah, you can still start with that sample and do some of the processing of the mixing plugins, just like we're doing in this video. But when you have like a kick, a snare, a hi-hat, a tom, you have the floor tom, you have overheads, you have all this stuff, you have a piano, you have... So if you're in that range, it's going to naturally start to build. Ozone 9 did an incredible job. Here's where Ozone 9 does not do an incredible job, when something's already baked. Okay, and I've noticed that like it will just say, oh, well, we can make it louder and it and it starts squeezing stuff and crushing stuff. So when you have that kind of headroom, I hate to say it, but an Ozone 9, if you just need a quick one out the door, you can use it. It's not a bad deal. So but you're let's talk about mastering in a different context. So let's say the guy says, no, Doug, I don't want it to sound like real loud. I want it to sound real dynamic. So that's where, you know we can come in and say, okay, let me mess with that a little bit. So let me use, um, I'm gonna try to keep it in the box. Let me use a pro limiter. This is a Waves plugin. I meant, to, I'm sorry, this is an Avid plugin, not a Waves plugin. And let me use just something stock. I don't wanna use the, the hardware, I wanna make it real world. Let's use the master desk. So let's pay attention to the kick drum, and we want to keep that beef. I noticed on the on the uh, isotope, it got really loud and really bright and really focused. So let's just do this as I would hear it, and then limit it up to negative 14 and see what happens. I've never really used this plug-in, by the way. Give it some image. Ah, too much image. Let's give it some less image. Give it some compression. Yeah, that's that's adding a nice little sheen to it, isn't it? So watch. The foundation do oh nice it's changing the ways all right let's get into it now we got the kick drum hitting you hear that now let's limit it up to negative 14 see what happens A lot better, I think. So, so in that case, this is really if you mix right, then the engineer has more tools at their disposal. You can look at great, you know, mastering engineers um, that have incredible studios full of stuff. We have two mastering rooms, so this is more. I have basic mastering processors. I have more than enough, okay? And then we have a studio with, uh, um, it's not my studio, but a studio that I work out of with an On Fairchild, some Spectra 610s. I mean, an incredible amount of awesome gear. But the way that you can make something louder with that equipment is really what you're paying for in this stuff. Like on the Portico channel, it's a prime example. I do not have it routed 
the way that I should route it to do that in this video. I have it set up for my mastering session today, so I'm like sort of like being hesitant. But if I was going to use the master bus process, I, I would have used, let me show you, to do that same thing, I would have used the depth on the sub in the middle, and I would have brought it up. I would have left the width alone because it seemed like it was wide enough and that, that sample was taking care of that. I would have changed the gain, okay, to push into the compressor, and I would have set my limiter to negative 14 or, or where it would peak out at negative 14. It's really hard to explain it without you hearing it. I would have also set the, the attack a little longer, and I probably would have had the release a little longer just to hold out that sample. In that case, I would have had a side chain at 125 and allowed the kick drum to come through, and then I would have pulled down and allowed the compressor to pull down everything from 125 and up to give you the perception that the low end was bigger than it actually was. And in a sense, you're making the low end bigger than it is. So then we would have taken, um, um, yeah, I, I mean, that literally would have been what I just did in there. So... In this case, we use the master desk to change the volume pushing into the limiter to get the correct image and, and the correct level. And now we're at a level of negative 14 LUFS, which is Spotify. And then prior to that, we were at a level of negative 26 to negative 20. So to end this video, and once again, shout out to my nieces for doing that little interview. That was really fun. So negative 14 is a finished product and you saw that um, ozone got it to negative 12 a little hotter than that and you have negative 26 to negative 30 is a really comfortable place to finish your mix okay now now here's the thing that you got to understand each channel being around that level you're going to start to notice that the master level continues to go up but by the time you're done you should still have enough headroom to make sure that your mix is going to translate right and you're not screwing up your mix so if you're more of an artist more of a producer and you're really 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 concerned about this when in doubt keep it around negative 28 on an lufs meter and i know that this could be totally disputed and somebody go no doug don't do that but this is in my experience has always yielded great results so my name is doug jenkins from imixandmaster.com thanks for watching uh, hopefully we gave you enough education where you can have confidence if you're a new engineer and you're tracking and you can say, man, now I, I feel like, you know, my mixes are going to come out good. And then on the master bus, okay, if you want to make it loud for your for the artist you're working with, just use the limiter and turn it up. Use an R comp and turn it up. Use a mastering processor and turn it up. And if you're turning out an album, you know, maybe think about paying a guy. Because there's some guys that are really good at turning the, the track up. Peace. We'll see ya.